If any of you guys are interested in the stock market or are interested in investing in foreign stocks, you may have recently came across a headline such as this. As you can see from the Japanese stock market performance so far in the year 2023, many investors do have more than enough reasons to be excited about the Japanese equities market. The market is up by nearly 30% just in this year alone, far ahead of the growth speed of the US S&P 500. In fact, Japan's Nikkei 225 index, the most looked into stock market index for Japan, have not been this numerically sky high since the early 1990s, a period just before in which the Japanese economic bubble was about to burst. Now, the people who have already invested in the Japanese economy, or are defendants of the Japanese economy in general, state that such rapid rise in Japanese stock prices that has now surpassed the one of the bubble era are all happening for a good reason. They are extremely optimistic about how after the pandemic, the executives at Japanese corporations have all reached this quote-unquote eureka moment where they now feel the sudden need to change the outdated Japanese management structure that has stayed unchanged for decades such as how Canon Corporation, Japanese industrial conglomerate known for their cameras, plans to diversify its board of directors for the goal of, to use their exact words, allow boards to have deeper discussions and make more resilient decisions. And of course, we cannot go without what every defendant of the current bubble level valuations of Japanese equities market never fails to mention. And that is how even the almighty Warren Buffett has endorsed the Japanese economy and has still not mostly pulled out of his investments in Japan. And I believe with Buffett's history of successful investments that made Warren Buffett the second richest person in the world at one point in time, not many people would question his investment decisions. But as heralded as Buffett is, not all of his investments made throughout his career were without faults, such as when he acquired a 12% interest in the investment banking firm of Salomon Brothers in 1987 and the whole decade of pain which Buffett had to deal with with the Nalgon Investment Bank. I mean, he did technically walk away with a profit from the whole ordeal after 10 years, but I remember reading his biography and how he stated that this was by far one of the most stressful times of his life and that he wishes to never go through such an experience again. So is Buffett potentially putting himself in another Solomon Brothers-like situation by putting his faith in the Japanese economy with a whole lot of headache coming ahead for him? Or has he made the right decision? The answer to that question is, of course, I do not know. As if I did know the answer to such questions and could perfectly predict the market, I'd be getting rich right now by either going long or short on the likes of the Mitsubishi Corporation or the Sumitomo Corporation in which Buffett is currently invested in. But with that said, let us now have a look into what the skeptics of the Japanese economy think of at the moment in regards to the bubble air surpassing level of stock prices that has now been reached in the Japanese equities market. Now, one of the common arguments in which the supporters of the soundness of the Japanese economy state is how the nation has quote-unquote handled inflation. To elaborate, Japan for decades have been dealing with the issue of deflationary economic atmosphere and have largely contributed to the deflationary economic atmosphere as one of the core reasons as to why the Japanese economy has remained stagnant for so long. However, consumer prices in Japan rose by a whopping 3.4% alone in April, higher than it has ever been for decades. But now, while such rising inflation is considered as welcome on a superficial level, there are a few problems associated with Japan's current sudden rise in inflation rates. First, all of this inflation has mainly been artificially created, mostly through the Ucha Lose Monetary Policy conducted by the Bank of Japan. To elaborate, on December 2022, the Bank of Japan spent 17 trillion Japanese yen, or the US equivalent of $126 billion, to buy the nation's very own government bonds. And the Bank of Japan has been doing something similar to this every single week for the past couple of months now, in order to control the interest rates of the nation's long-term bonds to stay at a certain level, which is almost near 0%. All of this is an effort to keep the liquidity high in the country and have the money circulate as much as possible. And the Bank of Japan was indeed quite effective in reaching their goals, as such expansion in monetary policy did keep the inflation high to a point that has rarely been witnessed in the country. But at the same time, can the Bank of Japan just continue to print 17 trillion Japanese yen in one month, then 23.69 trillion yen in the next month in order to keep the nation's interest rates ultra low and maintain an inflationary atmosphere? The answer is, they cannot. Numerically speaking, the Bank of Japan should be one of the last countries on earth that should actually be printing such an astronomical amount of its own currency, as Japan has the highest debt to GDP ratio in the entire world right now with 263%. So needless to say, there will have to come a point in time when the Bank of Japan will have to exit out of such ultra loose monetary policy, and when it does, this force from quote unquote above that artificially kept the inflation high in Japan over the past year or so may also be brought back down. 
and with the Japanese economy's historical tendency to head towards a near-zero inflation or even a deflationary economic atmosphere, nobody can guarantee for sure that this is not where the nation's economy will once again head towards once the Bank of Japan stops their set of ultra-expansionary monetary policy. And as prices of a stock market index and the nation's inflation rate have a positive correlation, once the inflation numbers basically quote-unquote come down in Japan to normal levels, the average price level of Japanese stock market index will also likely suffer. So whether the increase in equity prices that has almost simultaneously been the case for all the big-name Japanese corporations as of recent indicates the positive changes in the actual real fundamentals of the company, or whether they are largely temporary by manifestations, partly from the Bank of Japan's ultra loose monetary policy and the artificially created inflationary atmosphere in the Japanese economy will have to be tested throughout time. Now, the biggest concern raised in Japan by the skeptics of Japan's current bubble era surpassing stock prices is that a lot of this increase has mainly been made manifest through company stock buybacks. To elaborate, Japanese companies enlisted in the Tokyo Stock Exchange purchased a staggering 3.2 trillion Japanese yen worth of their own company stocks in the month of May 2023 alone. The Mitsubishi Corporation bought 300 billion yen worth of their own shares, while Sony and Honda each conducted 200 billion yen worth of stock buybacks. Now, although stock buybacks are indeed controversial among investors, it is not all necessarily bad. To elaborate, stock buybacks can be a good way to increase returns to the shareholders. We can go very much in depth with this, but to maintain the length of the video in the 10 to 15 minute range, let us just explain it in the simplest form. If a company repurchases its own shares out in the open market, this means less aggregate supply of shares of the company's stock available to be bought in the open market. This means that as there is now less supply of the company's shares, meaning that they have become more scarce, prices of the company's stock will increase. So now you can understand why the existing shareholders of the company tend to love it when the company executives announce such buybacks. And the number of stock exchange enlisted Japanese companies that began to conduct such aggressive buybacks started to increase drastically from the year 2022. So then the next question has to be asked, where did all these Japanese companies, companies that supposedly went through multiple years of the quote-unquote lost decade, suddenly get all this money from that allowed them to repurchase all the company stocks? The short answer is that many of them have been extremely stingy with retaining their earnings, never increasing the wages of the employees, and saving as much as possible on other expenditures for multiple decades. To briefly substantiate, Japan is notorious for basically having almost a similar minimum wage compared to the one in which they had during the 1990s. And not much is different for the typical salaryman in Japan, where the company typically overworked their employees to complete exhaustion while paying them with compensation levels that matches nowhere near that of other OECD nations. So by cutting corners on multiple areas of company expenditure and investment for years on end, many companies in Japan silently have accumulated substantial internal reserves for themselves, which by 2021 have reached its record high for the 10th consecutive year. So kind of like stealth ninjas, these Japanese corporations, after decades of saving and retaining their earnings, have now aggressively popped back up in the stock market and are repurchasing their company's shares with a sense of vengeance. And all of this, of course, undoubtedly, is heavily contributing to the pumping up of the current share prices. But now, someone could ask me this subsequent question. And that is how a few seconds ago, I've stated that the aggregate amount of retained earnings by Japanese companies have marked the record high for the 10th consecutive year. So then, why are so many companies suddenly conducting their buybacks now? Why not like 3 years ago? To get the answer to this question, we really have to dig deep into the recent regulatory changes that has been made in the Tokyo Stock Exchange. To elaborate, from 2023, the Tokyo Stock Exchange formally and publicly requested all companies with a price-to-book ratio that is below 1.0 to disclose direct improvement measures. This means that while Japanese companies before that had a low PBR could just hide silently among the thousands of other Japanese companies enlisted in the Tokyo Stock Exchange, that is no longer the case now. And what happens when they ignore the requests made by the mighty Tokyo Stock Exchange itself? then they may be downgraded into a bracket of a quote-unquote B-grade stock by the Tokyo Stock Exchange. To explain a bit further on this, the Tokyo Stock Exchange, as of April 4, 2022, has now made a new set of market segmentation that is quite different from the one in which they had before. Prior to the change, the Tokyo Stock Exchange had four market divisions. The first section, the second section, the mother section, and the JASDAQ. But then, as they have stated themselves, such market division was just vague and made it hard for the investors to identify real corporate value. But from April 2022, they have created a completely new set of market divisions, namely the prime market segment, the standard market segment, and the growth market segment. As you can probably imagine, 
no Japanese company wants to be potentially downgraded to a lower market segment. So in order to do so, if the Tokyo Stock Exchange requests the company to fix their below 1.0 PBR, most companies oblige under whatever means necessary for obvious reasons. As you can see here, Dainippon Printing has conducted a record 100 billion yen stock buyback of its own shares in order to fix its below 1.0 PBR ratio, as in the case of 480 other companies that have promptly announced to buy back their shares by April 26, only a few days after the Tokyo Stock Exchange declared this new market segmentation method. But while such stock buybacks are good for the nominal increase in the stock prices of the company, the skeptics argue that all of this capital has a steep opportunity cost attached to it, which is that they could have all been spent on other dimensions of the company that could have led to better improvements in the real, long-term valuations of the company, such as spending it on R&D, higher wages for the employees, or for employee welfare. But then, a natural question subsequently arises. Now that we know that the Japanese economy is currently doing some financial hokey pokey, the Bank of Japan printing trillions of Japanese yen on a weekly basis to keep liquidity high in the nation's financial markets, as well as the individual companies themselves conducting historical record repurchases of their very own company stocks to have their PBR and share prices high, what happens when the music stops? We all know that such means of short-term monetary policies or financial strategies such as share repurchases can have an immensely positive impact on the short-term nominal stock valuations of the firm. But what we also do know for sure is that at the end of the day, what leads to the long-term real increase in the valuation of the firm is through means such as innovation and fundamental improvements of the company. Just to provide the most cliche of examples. No matter how much financial hokey pokey Samsung played around with in the late 2000s to early 2010s, if the R&D department of Samsung did not successfully bring the Samsung Galaxy lineup to the global stage, it would not be the highly valued company that it is today. The same applies to Apple and their development of the iPod, then subsequently the iPhone lineup. So is such innovation and improvements on the real fundamentals of the Japanese companies happening behind the doors right now, behind all the nominal increases in the valuations from non-fundamental related boons such as extremely favorable monetary policy by the nation's central bank, or half-forced measures enforced by the nation's stock exchange to have the companies buy back their own shares to record levels? Or ultimately, is this all another giant bubble as already experienced by Japan in the late 80s to early 90s? That I do not know for sure as I do not have access to insider information and am no person to make omniscient market predictions. So as with all things market related, we will have to see how things prevail throughout time to know the answer.